What's up everybody, I am back, and yes, despite not even having the game at launch, we're going to be starting our third series in NHL 15 be a GM today. Now, I was going to do Dallas again, but I decided against it because uh, this team I wanted to do after the trade deadline, but seeing that they just made their big trade deadline move, and there's probably not going to be a whole lot else happening at the trade deadline, I don't think, unless some crazy deal with Phil Kessel happens, which I doubt. Um, because I thought this team was going to be the one who ended up will, with Phil Kessel if Phil Kessel got traded during the season. So I think that um, given the fact that Daniel Winnick is probably the second most likely to be moved player uh, at the deadline behind Phil Kessel, um, this, or um, I don't even know, um, Daniel Winnick, yeah, was the second most likely to be moved behind Phil Kessel. He would now be the most likely, and he is not, his purpose does not, anything that's super huge especially when you think about it in this way so uh, I did some custom rosters again I fixed some potential for younger guys and for older guys um, I didn't go through as in-depth as I did with the Dallas one because I kinda wanted to just get this done I literally just got this system like five hours ago I played like four games of Destiny um, with my friends for a little bit um, and we and now I'm doing this so um, I'm gonna go. Um, we'll go all star for now. Um, period length of five minutes. Be a GM length. I'm going ten seasons. Um, full. I'm gonna try and go the full ten seasons, but we'll see how that goes. Um, it might end up only being like seven, but I want to try and see. Like, I want to. The thing with this team is, I feel like we're gonna have to go through a rebuild at some point because all our players are very old. So. Um, well, not very old, but our, our a lot of our key pieces are over 30, so I, uh, you know, want to keep it um, to a point where we might have to do a little at least retooling. Um, so waivers will be on. Um, I was thinking about not having them on, but whatever. Um, draft pick ownership authentic. Um, GM firing off and uh, assistant coach edit lines no. And uh, rotates goalies will be off. Um, since I'm not going to be playing anyway, uh, we're going to make the season tie break a uh, continuous OT like it is during the playoffs. So, um, yeah, continuous OT instead of the shootout. Because if I play any games and I get stuck in a shootout, I don't play with the skill stick. So I really am at a disadvantage against the computer. So uh, I just think that for the purpose of this, it's better. And I'm going to put rotates goalies on, um, you know, as per usual. And uh, we are going to go with the Nashville Predators. Now, at the beginning of the – I'll do medium. At the beginning of this NHL, I, uh, I planned on basically doing two um, – two GM modes. Um, I would do Washington until the trade deadline pretty much and then after the trade deadline I was going to do Nashville because at the beginning of the season I thought Nashville was going to be a good team and they turned out to be one of the top teams in the NHL and I wanted to use Philip Forsberg, former Capitals draft pick um, who's basically turned into I think nothing at this point. The cap what did the Capitals get from Arizona? I don't even remember now um, in the Martin Erat trade. Uh, there on their end so um, this is the first file I've saved on here besides the new rosters so this is the first actual save game I have on this uh, new system that I uh, that I got the other day so or today excuse me I got it earlier um, so um, in light of what happened uh, with the Washington GM where I accidentally saved over one of the files and uh, then recorded uh, several episodes ahead. Well, I didn't save over it, but I recorded ahead and couldn't go back, and it was too far at that point. Um, I'm going to be making a save file every time I play, so there will be no problem. So we are going to go into uh, edit lines right here, and we're going to look at the roster. So um, well, Mike Fisher up here, um, and Mike Santarelli will play there. Um, we are. There's people down in the miners in there. All right, let's go there first. Oh, Philip For. Oh, okay. I remember. I gotta send Philip Forsberg down and then back up. We got a lot of. Uh, I made Philip Forsberg a playmaker 
because if he's a power forward, I don't feel like he's going to score as many points. And I feel like Philip Forsberg is capable of being a point per game player in his career. So um, I I chain him to a playmaker. I just got to send him down and then back up, um, and it will be no problem. I also think there's people in the minors that should not be. Yeah, Matt Cullen's in the minors. Weird. Um, well, uh, oh yeah. Wait. Am I like short a defense? Do defenseman first. Yeah, Weber, Yossi. Franzen's only an 83. I must have forgot to edit him. Um, Ellis, Volchenko. Well, okay. So we can send Bartley down. I don't have enough forwards now. I gotta call up Cullen. And then send down uh, Bartley. Alright, so. Um, that was the player we were missing then. Let's look. One, two, three. Why is Forsberg only a second? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So from here we can uh, look at how our lines are going to be assembled. Um, Where did you appear? Has Goss had a center? Yeah, 90 face-offs. He'll be a great uh, fourth-line center for us. And we'll put Craig Smith right here. My, how's Mike Fisher's face-off? He only 75. And I know for a fact that Colin Wilson's are better. Um, yeah, Santorelli's also a third-liner. Craig Smith's face-offs, actually. 80. He's younger, too. Paul Gostad's already kind of maxed out. Um, and then we'll put Matt Cullen up there, too. So our team is entirely composed of... Uh, we have two playmakers once I send Forsberg down and back up. Um, power forwards, two-way forwards, and two grinders. And then on defense, we have a uh, defensive defenseman. Uh, I don't know why Yossi's a two-way forward. we got two two-way forwards and an offensive and defensive defenseman. So we're more balanced on defense than we are on offense. That's for, that's for sure. And then, of course, we have Pekka Rene in goal. So what I'm going to do is uh, briefly... Briefly call up Kale Yarncrook and send down Forsberg and then send him back up. I know it's crazy, but I have like this, I have a really bad OCD, so it would like really bother me. And then I gotta talk oh, fuck, I gotta do this all again. Uh, what's Fisher's handedness? Right, so he should be on the left, okay. And then Forsberg is right handed, so he should be on the left in theory. And actually, we'll switch these two then. All right, James Neal on the right, and Philip Forsberg on the left. All right, I like that. Um, Craig Smith, center, Santarelli, and Cullen will be our third line. Um, so Santarelli and Franzen obviously are free agents in the off season, so uh, there is that situation to monitor. Um, and we have a few too many defensemen. Someone's going to end up on the bottom pairing. Um, so what I'm th and the power play. Um, is full obviously too so um, I th think we might leave Seth Jones off and we'll put him on the penalty kill um, so let's look at the roster since I just immediately went into edit lines I wanted to discuss the roster so obviously we have the crown jewel Philip Forsberg 86 overall already and he's only 20 years old has very little experience in the NHL up to this point um, I think he played like five games, or oh, he played 13 games last year and five uh, the couple years before that. Um, so he has very little experience in the NHL. He's only 20 years old, already in 86, four and a half star potential. Um, definitely a player of the future for us. Mike Ribeiro, uh, 34. We're gonna get a couple good years out of him, and then he'll start to drop. But we're uh, we're looking for him to have more this season that he had with Washington than this season that he had with Arizona last year. Um, Hopefully he can be somewhat realistic. James Neal, um, goal scorer, uh, body checker, um, pretty much everything that you'd want out of a uh, a winger. Um, you know, and obviously not good faceoffs. He plays solid defense, uh, big body, um, throws it around, a good passer, and he's got a decent wrist shot and slap shot. So he rounds out that top line pretty nicely. He can score some goals. Um, Mike Fisher, veteran presence. Um, Good, good defensively. Pretty good body checker, and he uh, he provides a good bit of offense. You know, 49 points last year, um, 21 in the lockout year, and uh, 51 the season before that. 
and uh, Colin Wilson, young up and coming uh, second line center for us. Hopefully, um, he only has 33 points last year, but he has like 40 points this year in real life in like 60 games. So we're hoping he can have a good bit of production. Victor Stahlberg, former Chicago Blackhawk. Um, has kind of been disappointing since coming here. He had good seasons with Chicago, but, um, you know, not anything that I'm, you know, at the, you know, I'm going to put Santorelli on the second line, actually, because I think it was listed Santorelli as a second liner. Um, so we'll try this. Santorelli, um, solid defensively. Um, more of an offensive player. Really good puck skills. Pretty good uh, senses and shooting. Uh, great skater. Um, I thought he was more of a defensive presence, but uh, he only has like 85s. So, um, you know, good, not super great. You know, what you'd expect out of an 84 overall. Craig Smith, 25, yeah, 25. Not a great shot. Okay puck skills. Um, for a, for a 2A4, they're pretty good. Um, good senses. Solid defense. Um, okay body checker. Again, not any, a pretty good skater, too, for someone who's 6'1", 202. Um, we're not a hundred. I'm not as hundred percent like committed to Craig Smith. So if something better comes along, you know, I'm not opposed to trading him in the trade. Um, Matt Cullen, 37, just good at good at everything. Not great at any one thing, but he's just good all around. And uh, Nystrom down here, uh, a grinder, um, decent shot, okay passing. You know, great physical presence. 84, 85, 87 on his defensive stats. Slow, but I mean he's a fourth liner. Paul Gostad, excellent defense. I don't know how he only has four stars defense. Excellent physical, excellent defense, um, good shooting and puck skills and senses and skating. So uh, he has above four stars in all those categories, but he could regress because he only has three and a half stars. Um, but he is a great fourth liner. Um, he almost should be a third liner, but... Um, who would we demo? We could put Craig Smith on the wing. Um, again, we're a very deep team. So to have an 84 overall on your bottom line, um, pretty good. And then uh, Gabriel Bork, uh, 23 years old. Solid two-way forward. Not the great not great physical or defense, but uh, his offense is okay. It looks like decent shot, okay passing, great skating. Um, doesn't take a lot of penalties. Um, definitely could trade him. Um, him and Craig Smith would definitely be, and Victor Stahlberg would be pieces that I'm not apt to, um, not against getting rid of in the trade. So obviously the core, one of the core pieces of our team is Shea Weber. Excellent slap shot. Oh, my God, that's far away. Shit. Um, so excellent slap shot, good p uh, passing and puck control, excellent senses, excellent defense. 92-92-92. Um, excellent physically, obviously, 6'4", 234. Definitely the, the epitome of a top two defenseman in the modern NHL. Um, provides great offense. Scores, uh, seeds. he scored 23 goals last year and 19 in that year. I don't know why he's a defensive defenseman. That's what I think thinking of more as a two-way defenseman. And he is probably the best defensive player I've ever seen play, personally. Um, so... Obviously, now I don't need to say much about him. Roman Yossi having a breakout year in real life, 86 overall. Uh, good, good shot, good passing, uh, good offensive awareness, but uh, not a great body. Okay, skater for a defenseman, and uh, good defense. You know, good two-way defenseman. Couldn't ask more on it. Obviously, Cody Franzen, big piece we acquired at the deadline um, in real life, and uh, he's pretty big body, 6'5", uh, good passing, decent shot. Good offensive awareness. You know, he's more of a two-way defenseman than an offensive defenseman. Don't know if we're going to hold on to him. Might, might, um, might let him walk at the end of the season. And Seth Jones, um, you know, obviously was picked uh, fourth overall a couple years ago. And uh, you know, good shot um, for a defenseman. Obviously, good skating. Hopefully, it gets better. He's developing physically, obviously, and he's already got really good defensive stats. And uh, he looks like a pretty. He looks like he could be a pretty good two-way defenseman. Um, I, I have faith in Seth Jones. Um, and then obviously when Ryan Ellis is a top six defenseman on your team, you have pretty good depth on defense as well. Um, he's listed as an offensive defenseman. He's really more of a two-way defenseman than all those bodies. Not all there. He's a good skater, uh, good offensive awareness, and uh, good defensive stats. Um, good passing. Um, Definitely going to put him on the power play over Seth Jones. Um, and Anton Volchenkov, 
um, former Devil. Um, great, um, great physical and defensive stats. Um, I don't know why his physical. Whoops. Keep doing that. We'll change up. I don't know why his uh, his physical is only four stars. I think it should be four and a half. But his defense is four and a half. Uh, not great offensively, but again, he's a defensive defenseman. I believe he's only on a one-year deal too. So. And then you know, best player on the team besides uh, Shea Weber is Pekka Rinne, elite goaltender. Only 31. You know, he got a good four or five years in him. Um, didn't play a lot last year. Then had a bad record the year before that. But uh, in 2011 to 12, uh, went 43 and 18 with a 2.39 and 9.23 goals against, or a save percentage, five shutouts. I believe he was up for the Vezina that year, actually. So. Um, I expect this team to at least make the playoffs, I hope, anyway, with all this depth. Um, I expect this team to be a playoff team. However, I don't know how far we're going to go. We do have a good we do have a good bit of pieces. We have a top two defenseman, two first-line players, a good bit of three second-line players. Um, I might, might play Goss that up. Yeah, we have three second-line players. I'm going to have to figure out what we're doing with that third and fourth line because, um, you know... Might move Matt Cullen down to the fourth line. I don't know. Nystrom is the only actual like fourth line player listed that we have, so that's pretty good depth. And then uh, if obviously if you have uh, you have Ryan Ellis on your bottom six, you know, um, bottom 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 two pairing, that would be what a top six bottom two, um, you know, whatever. Um, if he's on that pairing, do you get the idea of what I'm saying? We have depth, um, and we also have a good bit of cap space even though um, we have a couple of kind of bad contracts um, as one would consider them will go under the contract screen we're helped out immensely by the fact that Mike Ribeiro is on a one-year deal which is a, for a very low price I believe it's like two or three million and uh, not a lot of other players few good players are still on rookie contracts I believe and are low playing contracts like Colin Wilson who's uh, our second line center is only making two mil um, our two highest paid players are oh, Mike Fisher's coming off the bus. See, a lot of these contracts that are bad, like you'd say, oh, Matt Collins on a bad contract, 3.5 mil, off the books next year. Uh, Mike Fisher, 4.2, that's definitely going to go down um, if we keep him again. You know, could look at trades. Um, you never know. Um, but, um, yeah, James Neal is our second highest paid player, only making 5 mil. He's our first line right winger, so... And uh, Shea Weber's obviously on this deal, but you know, I could probably sign a player of that. I, that's less. That's less than I would pay a player if you wanted to re-sign for that, like in, in the game. So you know, to have a player of that caliber already, and then you got Seth Jones and Philip Forsberg, a top four D-man and one of our first liners, making less than a mil each. Anton Bolchenko making a mil. Yeah, Mike Ribeiro is only making a mil. Santarelli's only making a mil. Craig Smith, you know, Colin Wilson only making like two mil. You know, that's like. Nystrom's got a bad contract um, that's on the books for a while, but everyone's really lowly paid unless it's like Stahlberg. Um, we benefit from a lot of really good contracts on the team right now, but, you know, obviously that could change. Um, backup goalie is an area of concern, but we do have Magnus Helberg in the pipeline. Um, other than that, and the minors we don't have a whole lot. We have Kel Yarncrook and Austin Watson. Uh, after that, it's Pontus Aberg, a sniper, and Justin Kirkland. Colt Sissons is a three and a half. So we don't have a lot of big prospects in the minors, but uh, and no one that can play that's not already signed. So we don't have a lot of uh, really high-level prospects in the minors, which could come to bite us in the coming years. But you know, um, we are definitely a contender, and uh, we uh, we plan to show it. So next episode. We will get into some simulation. We'll play against the uh, play against the Chicago Blackhawks here on October 23rd. So thanks for watching first episode of this. Um, hopefully more videos to come. Um, this is definitely um, returning to YouTube um, like more more permanently. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So thank you guys for watching. Peace.